What's up, guys? Philip at Trade Genius along here with Bob Kudla, as always. Guys, they've laid the trap. Make sure you're not in it. We're going to talk about this in this video, so let's dive in. Trade Genius. All right, Bob, so we've seen a pretty intricate trap laid here. We think it's all, all the things are there for, for a trap, and uh, it's getting pretty precarious because when that trap door opens, <laughs> the fall can be pretty intense. And uh, you dug up some neat charts here. So let's uh, tell the tell the folks what we're dealing with here. Yeah, you know, you ever watch those uh, documentaries where they hang a nice piece of fish in the lobster trap and the lobster's walking all around and said, this looks pretty like an easy meal to mm -hmm. me. Yep. And you walk in through to grab the fish and you get done eating and you turn around and you can't get the hell out of the trap. Exactly. Well, that's where we are right now. And, you know, we're talking to you guys over the weekend here, Friday, Saturday, and we've been warning you guys for a while now. And we're starting to get these, these four shocks in the market. The market's getting really volatile. Friday was a, a down day. After they try to press it again, they're running out of suckers, you know, at the poker table. And then we started to get these big down drafts. The market was for, for Friday, the moves were really violent. And what's happening here is if you look at this chart, I want to show you now, you know, everybody's used to seeing the put call ratio, but this is the call put ratio on individual stocks. And look at the one on the right. That is today, you know, now. And it's absolutely ridiculous what's happening. And it, it kind of blows me away. And maybe because, Phil, you and I are more analytical and and me being in um, doing mergers and acquisitions and having to measure things and, and look at things from more than one dimension. People are being confused now. They're seeing stocks going up and they're automatically associating that with, oh, new bull market because that's what they're hearing. And what they're really ha what's really happening to them is that they're being led into the slaughter here and, and money is being transferred from institutional to retail. And this is showing you, this is, this is retail in action here, diving on these single. And look at the last couple of times it happened. And you, you and I were looking at the uh, liquidity charts uh, to match it up. Those last two times it happened, the Fed was putting liquidity into the markets and we've had two, we had 200 point down moves in the SPX, which is the main index. And now they're taking liquidity away. We have so many stocks over the 50 day moving average now that the expectation is over the next eight weeks, you know, you're looking at, you know, potentially for a, at least a 400 point move, if not a 20% down move in the markets, just based on probabilities. I'm not making a market call. All I'm telling you is that there's no bull market coming in this environment. Now flip to the next slide that kind of also uh, lays claim to this. And on Thursday, we had the largest amount of zero days to expiration option trading ever. I think it was 80 million contracts. It is just, it's mind boggling to me. And what they do is big money kind of gets the ball rolling in the morning, sets people off into covering positions right away. Um, retail comes, pours in after the market opens, after that initial dip, and then they come pouring back in, in the last half hour of the day. And institution is selling to them the whole day. They're like, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. Come again next time, come again next time. And then one day they're going to show up and uh, they're going to be all bowled up, ready to go. Like Friday, they're bowled up, ready to go, and they dumped the market 50 points on them. It went from being positive for the day to a negative 50-some print on ES slash SPX. And then the day ended down, I think, minus 40-something. And then on Friday going into a Monday, usually that's kind of set the stage for, for next week. So what you're seeing here, these are sugar highs. You know, um, you get you, you pump somebody full of steroids, you give somebody a, you know, a shot and go back into the game. And and once that stuff wears off, you're going to go back down to fair value. And we talked about fair value. I was I don't know if it was yesterday, the day before, mm -hmm. but we're 400 points over fair value. Mm -hmm. And usually when we come back down to fair value, don't we usually fill don't we usually over overreach to the other side? Yeah, that's why we think there's probably a 400 point air gap below the market right now because you get down to fair value and then you're going to probably go past fair value uh, for a bit because you know it's like a it's like anything in motion right it can show, overshoot a little bit just like to the upside here so that's why we, yeah we think that that's a realistic expectation of where this market can pull back um because they keep pulling you know, they're, they're, as of today they're still pulling liquidity out 
Yeah. And uh, for those of you who say we get too technical on thing, think of it this way. You're at a bar and you're on your fifth tequila shot. <laughs> OK, tell me how you feel tomorrow. <laughs> OK, that's kind of that's what kind of what these 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 charts are telling you. And the last chart we want to show you is just another view as to why we're, we're slipping into 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 recession land. And Phil, do you want to kind of walk through that one here? Because it's a little bit of an eye chart for me. Right. So this here is like another um yield curve inversion we've shown you guys the two-year 10-year yield curve inversion this is another type of yield curve inversion and it's a spread between a triple b rated corporate bond yields and the 90-day u.s treasury bill yield percentage this isn't something that people normally look at or reference or, or that you'll ever hear anybody on tv talk about but it's it's really accurate in in terms of letting us know that the likelihood of a recession coming is is highly probable february 07 was the last time we saw a reading this low we're lower than that. Uh, and then these other times uh, you can see on the on the chart, October 79, July 73, January 66, those are all problem areas. And of course, May 1929, the Great Depression, right? And you're in trouble until this thing retreats back up to these higher readings again. So like, uh, if you recall last time, it, it peaked out in November of 08. That was actually the where the crescendo was of the bear market uh, into the beginning of 09 and then it was over and it bottomed. So when you see these readings like this go back up and it's very similar to the yield curve um, inversion going back to more uh, positive spreads like I think plus 2.3% is about what we're looking for uh, for the yield curve to go back to normal. And so you'll, you'll see a similar spike back up in this, but this actually gives you more of a lead time on uh, on recession. So, you know, this fired off or is firing off now. And so what we think might happen is that when we look at the yield curve, it tells us that in reality, when the yield curve inversion bottoms out, which we think may have happened, you actually have to figure 100 weeks from that. And so it bottomed out last uh, in the last four to six weeks. So, you know, we're in we're basically looking well into 2024 for the resumption of a bull market where if we see what we saw in the last two, three, four weeks happen let's say third quarter, fourth quarter of 2024, that is a move that you can hang your hat on because now we're past all of the yield curve inversions. Everything's gone through the bear market cycle. This is realistically how these cycles work and realistically how the bond markets are responding to recessions. And bond markets typically lead to recessions and, and yield curves, uh, this one's a little different, but again, the yield curves are very, very good at signaling this stuff, but it's not something that's gonna be meaning that the market you know, dumps a thousand points next week. It's not like that. It's just telling you that long-term, if you're managing portfolios with a long time horizon, this is a place where at the very least, you're kind of stepping aside and going to cash at the very least, if not hedging your portfolio to profit from the drop with um, you know, shorting futures, or you know uh, inverted ETFs things like that so just another just another chart that shows you the more data points you have that are, are, are showing you confluence on a certain idea or a certain direction the more powerful the probabilities are that that's going to play out so it's just important for you guys to be aware of where we're at right now yeah and the triple B's aren't exactly the the best companies to lend money to going into a recession that's right. why you you, know, you see that it's basically you're not getting paid for the risk that you're taking Right. And a lot of these guys are going to be, end up in workouts. So it's just like everything else where we pushed everything to the wall. Yep. So appreciate you guys listening to us and, you know, babble on about this stuff. Let us know what you guys want us to talk about, discuss, you know, we're, we're open to whatever, whatever is financial related that can be actionable for all of us to make money or to not lose money, you know, in, in the financial markets, we're wide open. We, we'd like to love to hear your thoughts on that. So Otherwise, like, subscribe, hit the bell. If you want to trade with us, go to tradegenius.co. We find trades every day, whether or not you know we're bearish or bullish on the market. It's really irrelevant to our algorithms. If we see a trade, we take it. And you know, there's no time horizon on how long you stay in a trade. The only thing that matters is if you made money or not. So uh, you know, we can help you regardless of what the market's doing. So thanks for listening. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Phil. All right. See you guys later. Trade genius.